Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and Godot 4.4 Beta 1 is here. Now, Godot 4.4, I've been covering all the dev releases as they've gone, and I've covered them in quite good detail, because quite frankly, they're some of the coolest new features I have seen as of yet. So what we're looking at right now, come on up here, go to the About, and you will see this is Godot 4.4 Beta 1. And this is basically where all of the features that were under development are considered more or less stable, so now it's just kind of a matter of bug fixing. Now, there's a bunch of things that happen behind the scenes. One thing I'm not going to showcase today, but it is a major step forward, is we now have uh, the Jolt Physics Engine as not only uh, an option built in directly, but actually as the default. You should get much better performance out of Jolt, and going forward, they're going to be integrating all of Jolt's functionality directly into Godot. So that is a great step in terms of the physics integration. We also have, for Mac OS users, metal rendering on the back end. Another nice, just fundamental development. So what's new in this release? Well, one of the things I really like is this. I'm going to come up here and we're going to go ahead and add a camera to our world. So see our camera over here? That's nothing too special. But what is special is this over here. So now when you create cameras, you get a preview window. So you could do this in a roundabout way before, but this new setup, it is so, so very much nicer. I, I love this camera preview. I used to use add-ons to do this. Now you no longer need to. So if you want to frame a shot, a whole lot simpler than it ever was before. So I definitely like that new feature. Another thing that they've done uh, is they've added this functionality. So you see here, this crate. By the way, this is the GD Quest uh, sample. I'll show you where you grab these if you want to check them out yourself. But what I'm going to do is hit Shift G, and this turns physics placement on. So now it's using a raycast into the world, and it's placing objects based off of other collidable objects in the scene. So you see when we go on top, it places on top. Now when it gets the when the mouse cursor gets into a crack, you'll see it falls down in. So there, it's not flawless, but if you're placing objects physically in a world, that one is definitely going to make a massive difference. Now, another thing that we've got going on is this. So let's say you come down here and you're working with something and you're changing and you're dealing with position all the time. This is something that is super routine in the world of Godot development, but somehow you always have to dig down and find these values down here. So if you want to actually quickly grab these, you basically just go ahead and favorite a property. So anything that you're interested in, let's say you're really into toggling the visibility for some strange reason. Go ahead, favorite it. And now what you're going to notice is when you come in, you have a favorites roll up down here, and you can get direct access to those objects you work with the most. Now, if you want to go ahead and get rid of something, quite simple, right click it and unfavorite, and then it's gone. So if you are using properties all of the time, they are now available that way. Huge new development in my humble opinion. It's a little thing, but it's like the camera thing. Just the kind of quality of life thing that saves you a massive amount of time. And other things that happen, you can now run uh, the editor entirely in VR if you wish. So if you have a VR headset and you wanna actually edit your game in VR, that is an option there as well. Now probably the feature that most people are going to like the most is actually a scripting change. So I'm gonna come up here, Let's pick our script over here and you notice here number of uh, scripts already here so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a new one export and we're going to call this one a var and we'll call this a hyped dick uh, and what this is oops oop, go ahead is a dictionary that's nothing new right there. It's something we use all the time. Now, a lot of times you, what you want to do is a typed dictionary so what I can do is actually say this dictionary is made up of ints and strings, for example. So there is our value, and then we'll go ahead, and we, this is how you could define things. So we need to have an int, so the first thing, like so, and then a string value, uh, my first value, like so, and we can do things like second, and then my second value. So we got typed arrays a while ago, but now we have typed dictionaries. This basically gives us all the functionality you would expect from, say, a struct. Uh, so there you can see, uh, do I, I made an error of some kind. Oh, yeah, there. Sorry. Yoink. Now I got to get the syntax right. So here we go. Boom. First value and second value like so. So with our player selected, you'll now notice we have a hyped dictionary and you can drill in. You got value one and value two. So type dictionaries are definitely going to be a bit of a game changer for people using Godot. Um, generally, it's going to change the way a lot of people program, which is definitely a nice thing. We have other options too. Uh, we have REPL uh, based evaluation directly down here, which is quite nice. So you can actually type in a command and see the value uh, in the, uh, the debugger down underneath. 
But probably one of the newest features here is this one. So here we go. Actually, you know, I'm going to go to the other example for this one because uh, that particular example traps the escape key, which makes this very problematic. But what you can now do is you'll notice there is this new game tab. And when we run an asset such as this one, I'm going to go ahead and run this scene like so. Oops, did I pick the wrong thing? Uh, let's go here, tile map level, 2D, like so and then play current scene file. I don't know if I picked the wrong thing or not, but here you can see we are now running that particular scene directly inside of the editor. So now what you can actually do is you can toggle between uh, input movement or 2D mode. So here I am in 2D mode. And the big thing about this is you could now pick objects in the scene. So you notice now this sprite. So I pick this sprite, this sprite comes up. So you go here, boom, shows whatever you selected. Again, tile map selection as well. So you got the tile map selected right there. Go ahead, I can grab this sprite. And then what I can do is actually go ahead and make changes to it. So for example, here, the scale, I could go ahead and say, make this guy a lot bigger. So you can now interact directly with your game as it is running and change the values of those uh, properties within the world. So it allows you to kind of experiment, make things work as you're actually playing your game within the new embedded game window. This is a lot like the, the way that uh, things used to work or things do work in the world of Unity as well. It's a double-edged sword because, quite frankly, so I just made this change and this guy scaled up in our game window, but if I stop, you'll notice that change is gone. So this is definitely one of those things for uh, experimenting. It's, it's, you know, it's not going to persist the change as you are doing them. By the way, there is some control over how this is actually executed. So right now, I have it embedding in a window. You've got the option over here to make it float, if you wish, and then basically the same response go ahead, run, and then in this case, we are now a floating window as opposed to an embedded window. Which way you want to work with ultimately is down to you. Now, if you have an existing game such as the, the demo we looked at earlier on, uh, so here, like this 3D one, uh, when you hit escape in this particular example, it brings up a menu. So then you're going to have to deal with it in code specifically for handling the game methodology, like the, the game embedding. Uh, there are ways to check to see if you're currently running in the editor and maybe not handle that escape key and so on. So in my opinion, those are the, the marquee features of beta of Godot 4.4 beta 1, uh, but there is a ton more in here. So they're not going to be merging any new features or risky bug fixes until the release of 4.4. So that's the big difference between the dev branches and the this branch. So what we're going to have now is only small features added uh, or fixes there. Otherwise, it, it's nothing new. So the, otherwise, you end up in this forever cycle. It's not quite feature freeze yet. That will be with the release candidates, but you're not going to see a bunch of new stuff added like we have with every dev release to this point in time. So that's kind of like the quick run. But what we've got here, we got a ton of stuff. We'll go through it again. So we have the ability to embed that um, the game window like you saw earlier on. It gives you the ability to actually play with the properties lights if you wish. Uh, use property editors instead of labels to display keys. You got Apple game controller improvements, 2D shader instance uniforms. Uh, you can visualize 3D particle system emission shapes. Uh, added support for metal effects upscaling on macOS and iOS. Uh, added support for AGX tone mapping in your environment. Now, AGX is the default tone mapping in Blender these days. So you're going to get more close to what you are seeing in Blender. Now, it's a little bit less... Um, feature rich so, so it's more tuned for performance than it is for um, you know rendering uh, but it should give you something that looks much closer to what the film the, the tone mapping looks like inside of blender if that is your content creation tool of choice uh, it also had um, transparency support was added for uh, light map global illumination uh, number of changes here one other thing to be aware of there's automatic generations of uids uh, so every file you bring in that doesn't have its own built-in universal id will have a uh, one generated for it again i'm not sure that I'm in love with that feature, but it's definitely something that was added. A number of improvements to the animation tool sets as well. Uh, so you, you can create subregions of an animation that can be jumped to or looped without playing the entire animation. They've added the look at modifier 3D, uh, which replaces the skeletal IK 3D feature. Uh, and then right before the freeze, they added the spring bone simulator 3D. So you can see the hair being animated right there. Yes, it's jiggle physics. So if you want to implement jiggle physics, it is now going to be built in in this case uh, audio has some improvement including the ability to play waves loaded at runtime so now it has parity with aug vorbis in that result in that um, regard i mean uh, c sharp has a number of improvements the biggest one here is moved to .NET 
8. So all new projects will use .NET 8 by default. Existing projects will automatically be updated to .NET 8 once opened. And if you're targeting Android, exported projects will now use the Android runtime identifier. This means C-sharp Android exports now support all available architectures, so 3264, x86, and so on. Um, and then Core has a number of improvements. Uh, there's curves can now be beyond 0 and 1 in value. Uh, there's, again, the big one, type dictionary. That one is pretty huge. Uh, and I think that's the feature, at least from a code perspective, that the majority of people have been looking for. Uh, again, improvements to the world of the editor. We have the new game tab that we talked about earlier on uh, for the embedded game version for you know live manipulation. Again, 3D camera, that direct preview is brilliant. I love that. It's a smallish thing, but it's definitely uh, an improvement area. Uh, also improve the first product import. So when you bring things in, you shouldn't get errors, need to load things twice. Um, and then the debugger panel also allows you to do uh, an expression evaluator, which adds a new tab to the debugger panel, which allows you to evaluate expressions using local state of your scripts while stopped at a breakpoint. Basically, this means you can actually start typing code to evaluate a, a thing. So if you ever use REPL and something like Python from the command line and you're using it for debugging other things, you can now do that directly inside of the editor. Um, and then other improvements to the debugger as well. We saw this earlier on, shift G, you can turn it into physics mode and have things snap in your world, makes world object placement super simple if you are using uh, physics collisions. Uh, GDScript has improvements. So uh, the new export tool button annotation in tool scripts. Uh, also, they have uh, new warning tags. Also, uh, improvements to importer, including uh, new uh, VRAM compressed settings, which should make better results and faster imports, which is, Nice. Uh, textures not using the high quality import should look better by default, which is also nice. Um, support for the KHR animation pointer in GLTF. So there's tons of extensions in the world of GLTF files. Uh, so they now support this uh, Chronoscript extension for animation pointer. Uh, improvements to animation uh, and handling, uh, sort of input handling. Uh, improvements to animation, just general cleanups there, quality of life stuff. Again, physics was a big one because you now have Jolt as the primary physics engine. Uh, it is faster, uh, you can toggle it off. You you could switch back to the default one. And then going forward, they are going to be supporting Jolt as the primary mechanism and bringing us up to the feature parity of what Jolt offers that Godot currently doesn't. So we should just simply get better physics support in Godot. Uh, improvements to Android platform, rendering and shading improvements there. Uh, quite a few in this regard. Again, we have things like the metal back end, uh, improvements for the Uber shader supporting. Uh, then just kind of more flexibility in what you do, fine tune control there, uh, support for new functionality in place. Uh, we have uh, physics interpolation, so you can see the difference between the two. So basically it's, it's figuring out between the ticks with the interpolation should give you smoother results for your physics rendering. Uh, we do have improvements on the VR side of things and so on. So there is a ton of improvements on the graphics side as well and on the XR side. Again, you can also run Godot entirely in VR now, if you want to edit your game in VR, that is an option available for you. There's a bunch of things that I did not get into in more detail. And you can see here, change log wise, there's there's just so much. So this is for the 4.4 uh, beta one release. But again, we had all the dev releases, which I covered individually as we went. So again, I am scratching the surface of what is actually in this release, but I think this is probably the most profound Godot release in terms of quality of life and usability features uh, to date, in my humble opinion. But I'm curious what you think, uh, what you're most excited about in this particular release. By the way, if you're interested, all the content I use for us from the GD Quest demo repository. So if you want to check things out yourself, it's a great place to go. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is is Godot 4.4 Beta 1. Quite a bit to be excited about. Let me know what you find most exciting, what you kind of miss from this release that you really wish made it in. And that's it. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.